All right, well, I guess I'll get going since everybody's desperate to leave, probably. Thank you for staying late. I'm in the Steve Lonhart last talk slot. Um, I had, there was too much karma from my earlier WSN experiences, so I guess now I'm stuck at the, stuck at the end. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you today about, which, which was hopefully more to stimulate some conversation, um, maybe not so much the last <laughs> today, maybe you guys can catch me when we grab lunch or something, but um, this is a project that I've been doing with a whole bunch of students over the years, and is really designed to look at, begin to look at ecological fragmentation in the coastal zone and how we can talk about it in different, uh, different ways. But our, you know, our planet is so fragmented um, that it's really hard for us to appreciate. This is nighttime shots of the West Coast going past us now down into, uh, uh, down into Central America and South America. And, and we're, our society is so ubiquitous that it really is hard to get a handle on how big of a footprint we, we stomp down. One of the things that, that I've been looking at the last couple of years is, is fragmentation and connectivity, all these issues we hear about in this meeting, most typically in the context of MPAs, but roads are, uh, have become increasingly interesting to me and are very important fragmenters of, of habitat. And um, this is a problem across the planet. So I had a video of a bear getting running across a road, but it doesn't work right. Um, this is uh, one of our uh, three wolves we tagged last year in Turkey. This wolf was killed by a car about um, six weeks ago. Roadkill is a problem in the Middle East, uh, all across the planet, wherever you want to pick. If we talk about North America, I think this is a really important figure. This came out from a paper almost a decade ago where they didn't grab every single road on the planet. They didn't grab every single little teeny fire road, just major roads. And this is just the lower 48 states. And what you see is the vast majority of land in the US is within a few hundred meters of a road. So wherever we talk about uh, inland, coastal, what have you, um, roads are a potential issue. Um, all kinds of impacts can come from, from roads. Um, you know, Pollution, all kinds of interesting things, usually that take more um, technology and time and stuff to look at. Direct mortality is the easiest thing to see and um, is the most compelling when you get into conversations with uh, insurance folks and policymakers and stuff. So roadkill, uh, my experience now working in many places uh, on this issue, is um, at least equal to, if not severely exceeding the natural death rate from all other sources of mortality um, for many species. Um, we tend to focus mostly on the, the things that are easy to see, things like bear and deer, big things, but um, a huge number of organisms are smushed every day as we go across the planet. So, I'm do so this core set data set I'm only going to talk about is the stuff that, that my, my students and I collected and only from our Southern California uh, set, which is our most robust data set. Ventura County, where my, my university is, Cal State Channel Islands, is a fantastic place, to, a fantastic natural laboratory to do these um, experiments. We have mountains, we have agricultural areas, all these, these wonderful things. So I've just taken the, again, just the, the formal roads, the county roads and the, the state roads, and creaked those at a couple different distances, 100 meters and 500 meters. And what you see is if you're a vertebrate critter and you're down here, you're, you're pretty screwed, right? Uh, even if you're up in the other part of the county, which is more um, wilderness and, and federal lands, it's, there's still a goodly amount of, of roads. So this is a true issue for any critter trying to move around. And we see that as we look in the last couple of years looked, have looked more intensively. This is data from the Park Service uh, radio collared mountain lions and these guys should be connecting and they can't because of, in this case, this is the 101 corridor and they, they, get, they get smushed basically um, if they were to try to go across. So there's all kinds of genetics, population level impacts, community level impacts that can come from this stuff. Um, uh, the, the current big thing that everybody's working on is this notion of large scale uh, wildlife corridors. <clears throat> in this case, this map was created um, by a collaboration of a bunch of folks um, and, and points to the need to, to add connectivity between various um, areas that are relatively intact. This, is mo this mostly comes from, from large critters like mountain lion movement and things of that nature. So we now are training a whole bunch of folks in Ventura County to begin to, as citizen scientists, go monitor wildlife movements so we can verify if those are real. Um, the data I'm going to talk to you are, are, are very simple. These are just driving transects for dead things. And so, so there's two primary interests here. One is uh, how many things die in this national recreation area, this national park, 
which runs from Oxnard to Santa Monica, and everybody's going to be at Oxnard next year, right? You okay? Good. Uh, party on the beach and all that kind of good stuff. Um, anyway, so, so the Santa Monica Mountains, <clears throat> and then Ventura County overall, which again is a more cr- uh, a wonderful cross-section of many different landscapes in the coastal zone and beyond. So this, this, the core set of the data I'm going to talk to you about right here is just um, from the last seven years. And this is opportunistic. We have no money for this. So this is uh, most, most of the data I've collected, but uh, my undergrads and undergraduate classes have collected about a fifth of the data. And so many, many students have helped out, um, and it's, it's a wonderful project. Um, we have many more segments than this, but the core set is just 55 road segments that vary in size. Some are very short, some are very long. The median length is about 7.6 miles. I'm using miles here um, instead of kilometers because <clears throat> we measure distances with odometers because we don't have hundreds of GPSs to give to students, so, so the units are miles here. Um, th- this current, uh, when I took the last grab, about 4,344 transects, 35,000 miles driven. So our surveys are transect based. They're not point recording where animals kill. They're actually consistent segments driven every time so we can get accurate estimates of kill rates and things of that nature. Overall, if you just throw everything together, you get about one thing killed every 10 miles you drive in coastal California. And uh, if you're interested, this is our, our, our also done with no money, so you can download it and tell me how crappy it is. Um, this is our uh, iPhone app that says free. Anybody can download it. And uh, people that are driving to school, wherever, can collect data and send it to us. The next iteration will be cloud-based, and you guys can query the database as well. This just sends us data. Uh, So far, this is being used in 39 different countries um, as of February. Uh, So this is a typical thing. You're just driving down the road, and you're looking for dead things. We have, for the Southern California data set, we have uh, a variety of categories. Many things are unknown small, unknown medium, unknown big, because they're too smushed to tell or uh, you're driving too fast to check it out. Um, uh, 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 90 different unique categories uh, that don't overlap at all, and uh, 85 things identified down to the species level, and uh, uh, most are, are singletons. This is just the, the most popular things in the data set. The category, the number of kills, and the relative percent of the total number of kills. So unknown things are very common. Small things are common. Rabbits, squirrels, possums, etc. But you do get, um, a f- we get a fair amount of things like coyotes, 2% of our kills, et cetera. So this is a, since it's WSN, I, I took out most of my, my naturalist stuff to fit in time, but I can't, I have to show you, teach you guys some animals. So California ground squirrel, very common. That's an example of a small thing. Long-tailed weasel, probably roadkill is orders of magnitude greater than the regular kill rates for these guys um, in nature. Uh, a pocket gopher, also small. And then we get a lot of migratory things, like in this case, a hooded oriole. Then we have median-sized critters, so this cormorant um, coots that tend to come through in big flocks and get whacked all at once, um, and then things like uh, medium-sized snakes, uh, and then we get big things. So this, this great horned owl has about a meter and a half wingspan, um, uh, coyotes, deer, and then we have a lot of charismatic things that people seem to care about. Um, things like bobcats and uh, um, badgers and things of that nature. So we have a whole variety of critters that we see. Um, the the, the take-home, since I'll, I don't have time to go into too much depth into everything, is that edges are totally key. Edges are super important for the kill um, rates of these guys. Wetlands and riparian corridors are hot spots. And in particular, wet, urban wetlands and coastal, uh, coastal wetlands in Southern California appear to be large epicenters. We get looking only at the big things. This is not everything. It, it would go out and blow out of your mind if I show you all the stuff. But just the big things, the things that if you hit it, it would screw up your car and maybe kill you, kind of size things. We have about 5,000-ish things being killed each year in the Santa Monica Mountains. They have to produce, the, the ecosystem has to produce that many large-bodied critters just to take care of the car traffic. That's about one individual kill per square kilometer each year, large animals. And then countywide, about uh, 14,000 large-bodied things are killed. Uh, there's all kinds of interesting patterns here. We can't, don't have time to go into it, but real quickly, there's, there's temporal patterns. We see the, the stuff peak after springtime, and it, it tends to peak when critters uh, tend to leave their natal areas and go disperse out. And you can see all kinds of interesting patterns. We have some things such as skunks and coyotes that are pretty much killed all year round, and then we have some things that um, have clear seasonality, such as the weasels and the coots, 
that uh, we don't see at other times of the year. Um, here is a breakdown based on uh, this session is supposed to be about habitat or something associations. I'm not sure why, why I'm in here, but um, but so so here here's a a little breakdown of that. <clears throat> These are all different road segments classified into different landscape elements, and what you see is we have some clear outliers. Those outliers are wetlands, and if, indeed Biona wetlands, which is a, a wetland in, in um, urban Los Angeles, is off the charts. So these areas are incredibly productive, and they get whacked, and they lead to, <clears throat> we have a pretty consistent predictive power for just on habitats for things like mountains. But when we get to the beaches, because these things have such high productivity, the variance tends to go up like crazy. In general, um, I, I came to this with an incorrect worldview as, as to how I think, uh, or the patterns I, I expected from roadkill. So we, we tend to think of these areas, wilderness areas, uh, protected areas type stuff, and there's lots of wildlife there. So the assumption is always, and when I ask my students this, everybody says the same thing, that that's where we're going to see the greatest amount of kill. In, con in, um, in contrast to that, we have the more urbanized areas where we think there's not that many animals, that's where people are. Um, and, and so that's what tends to run our thinking about this. But it turns out what's actually important is this thing, is the interface, is the overlap between these two areas. And so if you, I can, I've broken that down in different, different regions. If we talk about um, how efficient cars are at killing things, um, the, uh, the, co the core is, is pretty, um, pretty efficient uh, with regards to that, um, and the edges are less efficient. But if we talk about the overall area, what we see is that the, the core has much less um, kills than the edge. The, the action is really at the edge. And how I think this relates to some of our discussions here at WSN, and this was my hope that this talk was going to be earlier and we could discuss this and you guys could tell me how wrong I am over, over uh, um, attitude adjustment hours and things, is that <clears throat> this notion of vehicle-associated mortality is not constrained to the, the terrestrial zone. And indeed, it is um, a, a function, I would say, of pretty much the whole planet now. So these are some images of, of whale kills. This is a ship strike off Sri Lanka earlier this year. Uh, here's um, a whale that's that's been rammed um, by a boat, and another one in Sri Lanka again. So, so these are the same things as, as cars, right? Just a little bit bigger. And now people are very increasingly concerned about whale strikes and these marine man turtles and all this kind of good stuff. And the, the approach has been, <clears throat> this is our, these are our Channel Islands, of course, and this is an estimate of where um, the critters are. The assumption is that um, the animals are in one spot and the, the vehicles are going into their spot. And if we move, we move for example, uh, shipping lanes out of this, this core area, that that'll make things all well and good. And the assumption there is that, um, well, well, one possible assumption from some studies that, that have talked about this have said that, well, you know, it's really hard for whales to hear vessels coming, and there's this issue with refraction of sound, and they can't tell the direction the vessel's coming from, so they actually um, just are looking around and get whacked, essentially, by this oncoming um, vessel. And I'm not sure that's, that's entirely correct given the, the overall behavior of these guys. And so, so my supposition from our terrestrial stuff is that the real issue is at the edge. It's not at the core thing. And, there, and all this discussion is focused on the core. And so I think that the, the greater kill quantities are going to be on the edge. And so if that's true, it shouldn't matter how much we move the shipping lanes. It's the issue of the quantity of, of vehicles themselves, not, not where they are. And so my... My postulate that might be totally wrong is that um, this isn't going to help anything. That shifting these lanes around and, and making all these uh, shippers angry and all, and, and all that kind of stuff, burning up a lot of our capital, is not going to achieve the ecological goal that we would like. So um, with that, I'm sure I'm about out of time. So I will just say that again, roadkill, huge source of mortality, completely underappreciated. Um, lots of correlates. There's all kinds of neat things you can look at here. Um, but the edge is the key thing. Download our free iPhone app, iPad app, Splatter Spotter. And, uh, and I think there's some implications that, that this terrestrial stuff has for the marine environment. And uh, we can talk more. And I'll leave up our, so the, uh, the app is Splatter Spotter. Um, if you guys, if I didn't say it enough times, Splatter Spotter. So, okay, so great. Thanks, you guys.